Board Game Reader presents Space Base. An intergalactic dice game of fleet management for a two to five space based Commodores age 14 and up by John D. Clare. Overview In Space Base, players assumed a role of a Commodore in command of a small fleet of ships. Ships begin docked at their stations and are then deployed to sectors as new ships are commissioned under your command. Use cargo vessels to engage in trade and commerce, mining vessels to build recurring base income, and carriers to spread your influence. Establish new colonies in a sector to gain even more influence. Gain enough influence and you just might be promoted to Admiral. Gameplay Overview Space Base is a race to 40 victory points. On your turn you will roll two six-sided dice. All players will then claim rewards from their cards, either for each individual die or for the sum of the dice. For example, if you roll a 5 and a 6, you could claim the rewards for the 5 sector and the 6 sector cards in your board. Or you could claim the reward of only the 11 sector card on your board. Importantly though, if it is not your turn, instead of gaining the rewards for cards on your board, you will gain rewards for the deployed cards above your board. After rewards are gained, the active player may buy a new card to place on their board, causing the card currently in that sector to be deployed above their board. As new cards are bought and deployed, your base will get better and better at a faster rate. Don't forget to score points, because in the end, points are what matters. Goal. When any player reaches 40 victory points, you will finish the current round so all players have the same number of turns, at which point the player with the most victory points wins. Components. There are 60 starting ship cards divided into 5 identical sets each with their own unique colour. There are 132 ship cards consisting of 48 level 1 cards, 48 level 2 cards, and 36 level 3 cards. There are also 12 colony cards. Each player gets a command console. There are 5 player boards available. There are 30 charge cubes, 2 six-sided dice, the side of the rocket is just a 1. There is nothing special to note. 5 credit cubes, 5 income cubes, 5 victory point cubes, 1 starting player card, one field manual rulebook. Your game of Space Base should contain these items. If it does not, contact customer services at alderac.com for assistance. Actual contents may vary from those shown. Card Anatomy. The top left number is the cost. Cost to buy the card. The top right number is the sector number. This number indicates where the card must be placed on your board when you buy the card. The blue section is the station reward. Resources or ability you gain if this card is on your board. The lower red section is the deployed reward. Resources or ability you gain if this card is deployed, i.e. tucked partially under the top of your board. See page 12, placing a card example. Anatomy of the Command Console The grid below is your resource track. Your credits, income, and victory point cubes are placed on the track to indicate how much of each resource you have. Sector Each console has 12 sectors, arranging from 1 to 12. Sector Number This is a reference for the sector number. Gaining Resources when you gain resources, move the appropriate cube up the track a number of spaces equal to the amount you gained. For example, if you gain two credits, you would advance your credits cube up two spaces. There is no limit to the number of credits, income, or victory points you can have. If you ever find yourself with more than 40, place a charge cube on the 40 spot of the retrospective resource and simply start counting again at the zero space, adding 40 to the total. Core Concepts The following are key concepts that you need to understand to play Space Base. These will be covered in further detail later in the rulebook. Simultaneous Rewards After a player rolls a dice on their turn, everyone, the active player and all passive players, independently decide how to allocate the rolled dice, then gain rewards from their player cards. Deploying Ships When you buy a new ship, place it in the sector of your board that the card indicates. The card already in that sector gets deployed, which means turned upside down and tucked under the top of your board in the same sector with its deployed effect visible. Deployed Ship Stacks During the game you may buy multiple cards for the same sector, thus deploying multiple cards there. In this case, these deployed effects stack and should all be visible. When you allocate dice in that sector as a passive player, on another player's turn, gain rewards for all your deployed cards in that sector, if able. An example of multiple deployed abilities stacked in one sector. Red deployed rewards above your board are gained on opponent's turn when they roll the dice. This white symbol sometimes appears in the upper left hand corner of the text box. This means that everything in that box is an activation ability, and not a reward. More on this later. Blue station rewards are gained on your turn when you roll the dice. While a card is on your board, ignore the upside down red deployed ability at the bottom. Station versus deployed rewards. As a general rule, cards on your board are called station cards. Offer rewards during your turn. 
and cards deployed above your board offers rewards during your opponent's turn. We've already defined active and passive a few times on this page. Blue rewards can only be gained during your turn, and red rewards can only be gained during opponent's turns. See example above. Important! Understanding rewards versus abilities. This is the hardest thing for new players to grasp. If you get confused with how an ability card works, first check the card clarification section towards the end of the rules, and if it still doesn't make sense, come back here and make sure the concept makes sense. A reward and an ability are different things. Rewards are gained based on a dice roll. All ship cards give you rewards. The results of each die roll will tell you which cards you can gain rewards from. Rewards are commonly credits, income, victory points, or a charge cube. The charge cube is the odd one here, and mostly where people get confused. Cards that give the reward of a charge cube will show one or more blue squares if the card is stationed on your board, or red squares if the card is deployed above your board. When you gain the reward for one of these cards, all you do is place one charge cube on one of these squares. That counts as the reward this card gives you for the dice roll. If all the squares already have a charge cube, then you get no reward from this card. Abilities Abilities are distinguished by their linkage to one or more blue or red square, and the presence of this ability icon, a white circle, in the top left of the ability box. Using an ability requires you to remove a certain number of charge cubes from that card. This means you cannot use an ability until you've placed enough charge cubes on the card. Moreover, once you use an ability, you will have to get the charge cube back on the card before you can use it again. Important! To use an ability, you do not need to roll any specific die result. The timing of when you can use an ability is specific to that ability, and has nothing to do with what the roll was. In summary, charge cubes are placed as the reward for dice rolls on cards that have abilities. Once an ability is fully charged, you can use it as desired, independent of the dice roll, by removing the charge cube from the card. These cards have only rewards. These cards have charge cubes as a reward, and abilities that use the charge cube. Timing Restrictions of Abilities Abilities have timing restrictions, and you can check the ability cards in detail section for more on each ability. Green abilities can be used on any player's turn. Blue abilities can only be used on your own turn. Red abilities can only be used on your opponent's turns. Note that the colour of the charge square does not have to match the colour of the ability. Unlike rewards, an ability being deployed or not deployed has no impact on when or whose turn you are able to use it. Only the colour of the ability determines on whose turn you can use it. Setup Number 1. Command Consoles Each player takes the following. One command console. One set of 12 starter ships. Cards belonging to a specific set are denoted by their card back. One cube for each track. Each player should place their console in front of them. They place the victory points and income cubes on the zero space, and the credits cube on the five space. Each player then places each of their starting ships face up in the sectors as indicated in the sector number in the upper right corner of the card. Each sector on your board should have one card in it. Number 2. Colony Cards Take the 12 colony cards and place them face up in ascending sector order. Number 3. The Shipyard The Shipyard is a set of 18 fleet cards available to buy during the game. Separate the cards into 3 decks based on their card backs, and then shuffle each deck separately, and place them face down on the table. Draw the top 6 cards from each deck and lay them face up on the table to create the Shipyard. Charge Cubes Place the charges in a pool available to all players. Number 5. Determine Starting Player Make sure each player's credits start at 5, then each player should do the following. Draw one random card from the level 1 deck. Lose credits equal to the card's cost, shown in the top left corner. Place the card in its respective sector on your board, according to the number listed in the upper right corner of the card. Take the card currently in that sector, turn it upside down, and deploy it in the same sector. See Deploying Ships on page 7. The player who drew the card with the highest sector number is the starting player, and takes the starting player card. If two or more players tie for the highest sector number, each tied player rolls the dice, and the player of the highest dice total is the starting player. Finally, each player gains additional resources according to their turn order position. The starting player does not gain any resources. The second player gains one credit. The third player, if any, gains two credits. The fourth player, if any, gains one income. The fifth player, if any, gains one income. Players are now ready to play the game beginning with the starting player's turn. This page shows an example four-player setup with the shipyard, colony cards, and command consoles all visible. How to play The starting player takes the first turn of the game. When a player finishes their turn, the next player clockwise around the table takes a turn. Players continue taking turns until the end of the game. See page 16. End of game. On a turn, 
When a player is taking a turn, they are considered the active player. Everyone else is considered a passive player on that turn. Turns are fairly simple in Space Base. Generally, the active player rolls the dice. Based on the roll and the cards on the player's board, all players will gain zero or more various rewards. The active player buys a card or chooses not to. If the player bought a card, they reset their credits to their income. The active player's turn ends and play passes clockwise. What follows are more detailed and formal phases of a turn to help clarify when abilities can be used. Number 1. Abilities may be triggered. Remember, rewards and abilities are different things. All players may optionally trigger abilities as desired. The active player may trigger abilities with blue or green ability boxes. The passive players may only trigger abilities with red or green ability boxes. You may not trigger certain abilities like those with a two dice icon. Number 2. Roll. The active player rolls both dice. Some abilities like reroll or set dice may be used now and only now. Number 3. Allocate dice. See examples on the following pages. Each player chooses to claim the dice separately, or as a sum, each player's choice is independent. For example, if the active player chooses to take the sum of the dice, it has no impact on the other player's ability to choose the individual dice or the sum of both. Any player that chooses a sum may now trigger abilities that show the green two dice and arrow icon. See page 23. Number 4. Gain rewards. Each player now gets the rewards on their cards for the sectors the dice hit. Each sector that you allocate dice to allows you to gain rewards from cards in that sector. The active player gains the blue rewards for cards on their board. The passive player gains the red rewards for deployed cards. Passive players with multiple deployed cards in one sector gains all the rewards in that sector when allocating dice there. See the following examples for further clarity on this. Note. If doubles are rolled and you take the dice separately, you gain the rewards for that sector twice. Blue versus red versus green. Blue rewards can only be gained and abilities used during your turn when you are the active player. Red rewards can only be gained during an opponent's turn when you are the passive player. Green abilities can be used during any turn, whether you're the active player or the passive player. There are no green rewards. Number 5. Abilities may be triggered. Same as before, players may now trigger abilities if possible and desired. Number 6. Buy a card. The active player may buy any one card they can afford from the 18 available ship cards in the shipyard, or buy a colony card. The active player may choose to buy no cards if they want to save their credits. You may not buy a card that costs more than the number of credits you have. If you buy a card, you must spend all your credits. Set your yellow cube to zero, even if that means you spend more than the price of the card. When you buy a card, place it in the appropriate sector on your board, as indicated on the card. The top right grey number. The card that was in that sector on your board becomes deployed in that same sector above your board. See example on page 15. Number 7. Charge abilities may be triggered. Same as before, players may now trigger charge abilities if possible and desired. Number 8. Refill shipyard. If any cards were taken from the shipyard, replace them with the top card of their respective deck. Each level should have a selection of 6 cards at the end of your turn. Number 9. Income. If the player's active credits cube is lower than their income cube, they move their credits cube up to be equal to their income cube. This is all income does, but it can be quite handy. Passive players do nothing in this step. End of turn. The next player in clockwise order begins their turn. Active player example 1. Allocating dice, gaining rewards. If you are the active player and you rolled a 5 and a 6, you could choose to take the Sector 11 reward, gaining an income, advancing your income cube one space, or both the Sector 5 and Sector 6 rewards, gaining two credits and moving your credits cube two spaces. Active player example two. If you are the active player and you roll a four and a four, you could choose to take the Sector 4 reward twice or the Sector 8 reward. In this example, Sector 8 is the obvious choice since it would give you three credits instead of the two credits you would gain for using Sector 4 twice. Passive player example. If you are a passive player and the active player rolled a 5 and a 6, you may choose to take the Sector 11 reward card for 4 credits, or both the Sector 5 and 6 rewards for a total of 3 credits, 2 from 5 and 1 from 6. In this case, Sector 11 is clearly the better choice. Example: Buying and placing a card. The ship you bought has a sector number of 9. The ship currently on your console in Sector 9 is deployed under your board, so its deployed reward is visible. The bought ship is then placed in Sector 9 on your console. End of the game. When any player reaches at least 40 victory points, it triggers the end of the game, even if this happens on another player's turn. Finish playing the current round so that each player gets an equal number of turns. Then the game ends. This means the player sitting to the right of the starting player will take the last turn of the game. The player of the most total victory points is the winner. 
If two or more players are tied, play one more full round. Each player takes one more turn. After which, the player with the most victory points is the winner. Even if that player is not one of the original tied players. If still tied, continue playing extra rounds until a winner is determined. Reminder. While your resource track only goes to 40 spaces, there's no limit to the number of victory points, or credits or income, you can gain. Place a charge cube on the 40 position of the respective tracker and simply start counting again at the zero space, adding 40 to the total. Colony Cards When you purchase a colony card, you have established a new colony in that sector. It is no longer under your control, or the remaining command of your ships deployed deep in that sector. The sole purpose of colony cards is to score immediate victory points. However, once bought, these cards will clog up your board and potentially slow your progress. Wall 12 colony cards are available to buy at the start of the game. Unlike cards in the shipyard, when a colony card is bought, it does not get replaced. When you buy a colony card, follow all the usual rules. Place it on your console in the sector indicated by the number in the top right of the card. Then deploy the card already in that sector. After placing the colony card, immediately gain the victory points indicated on the card. Tip. Place your purchased colony cards face down on your board as an extra reminder that they have no further effect. Once a colony card is placed, it cannot be replaced, meaning you may no longer buy cards that would be placed in that sector on your board. Moreover, colony cards have no rewards when dice are allocated to them on your turn. You still gain rewards and other players' rolls from deployed cards in that sector, however. Colony cards may never be deployed, even with a card effect. Regular Rewards Cards in Detail Below are some of the reward types available in Space Base. Credits. When you gain this reward, advance your credits cube by that amount. Income. When you gain this reward, advance your income cube by that amount. Victory points. When you gain this reward, advance your victory points cube by that amount. Tax rewards. This reward simply has text that describes what you gain when you get the reward. Claim a card specifically means you take the indicated cards for free. Buy a card means you may buy a card in addition to your normal buy. Spending only the exact cost of the card instead of all your credits. Arrow. Both directions. If there's an arrow pointing to the right and one to the left, then you choose whether to gain the rewards on one sector to the left or one sector to the right. For example, if the card shown here was on your board in sector 10 and you rolled a 10, you could gain the rewards for your sector 9 or sector 11 card. In the example below, if the same card was deployed in your sector 10 and another player rolled a 10, you would gain the rewards for all cards deployed in your Sector 10 as usual. 2 income, plus 3 credits. And the reward for this card would mean you would also get all the rewards for the cards deployed in your 9 Sector, or in your 11 Sector. So 4 more credits and 3 victory points from your 11 Sector. Arrow and another reward. If there's an arrow and another reward, the arrow works the same in this case. But you can only get the rewards for the Sector in the direction of the arrow. However, you also get the thing shown in addition to the arrow. For example, if the card below was on your board in your 12th sector, and you rolled a 12, you would gain 3 victory points, and whatever reward you get for sector 11. If the card was deployed in your 12th sector, you would get all of your other red rewards in that sector. One victory point, and the arrow would give you all of the red rewards in the 11th sector as well. A note on infinite loops. You can't. Multiple arrows next to each other can chain together. However, you can't create infinite loops. If you use the sum of the dice, each reward may only be claimed once. If you use individual dice, each reward may be claimed no more than twice. One for the die, and one for the other die. For example, in the case below, if you roll a 7, you would gain one credit, and then also gain your Sector 8 rewards. Your Sector 8 reward lets you gain your 7 or 9 Sector reward. However, since you have already used your 7 Sector reward for this roll, you can't gain it again, so you would want to gain your 9 Sector rewards. Ability Cards in Detail we talked about this topic previously in Understanding Rewards versus Ability section, and we will be repeating some of that here. These cards have one or more coloured squares on them, see examples above, and an ability box that describes an ability that card can do once it is fully charged. These ability boxes have an ability icon in the upper left hand corner. Remember, things in ability boxes are not rewards, and you do not get them when you roll the dice. When you allocate dice such that you gain the reward of an ability card, all you do is place one charge cube on the card on one of the squares. Nothing else happens. Blue squares appear in the station section of cards, and likewise can only be charged as a reward during your own turn. Red squares appear on the deployed section of cards, and can only be charged as a reward during an opponent's turn, when you are the passive player. Once the required charge cube are placed on a card, they may be removed to use the ability as desired, independent on the result of the dice. Blue abilities can only be used during your turn, when you are the active player. Red abilities can only be used during an opponent's turn, when you are the passive player. Green abilities can be used during any turn, whether you're an active or passive player. 
Remember, regardless of when the ability can be used, charge cubes are still gained as rewards based on allocating dice, and the rules for when you gain rewards for dice rolls apply as normal. Some abilities require just one charge dice in order to use them, and will show a single coloured square. Some abilities may hold multiple charge cubes, but only need one charge cube to use the ability. These coloured squares do not have connectors linking with them. In these cases you may have multiple charge cubes on a card, but you need only to spend one charge cube to use the ability. Other abilities require multiple charge cubes to use, and will show a number of squares linked together. Abilities that have multiple linked squares cannot be used until all the required squares are filled with charge cubes. When you activate the ability, you spend all the charge cubes. The number of charge cubes required for many of these abilities vary based on the number of players. An empty square needs to be filled in order to use the ability. A square with pips in needs to be filled if and only if the number of players is equal to the number of pips shown. For example, in a two-player game, all four squares would need a charge cube, whereas in a three-player game, three of these squares would need a charge cube, and in a four- or five-player game, only the top two would need to be filled. Rewards and Charges Some charges, examples to the right, give you both a regular reward and a charge cube. When gaining rewards for these cards, you gain both the credits or other rewards indicated under the name of the card, and you get to place a charge cube as normal. Timing as long as an ability can be used after gaining rewards for the dice roll, you may use that ability the same turn it becomes fully charged. Also note, almost always players can simply allocate dice, gain rewards, and execute abilities simultaneously in order to minimize downtime. If it becomes important to resolve things in order, the active player should allocate dice and resolve all rewards and activations first, followed by the next player in clockwise order. Deploying cards of charges. If you have a card on your board with one or more charge cubes, and it gets deployed due to buying a new card in that sector for example, any charge cubes on the card may be transferred to the deployed effect on the same card, if possible. Example: Your UES Kruznov is being deployed and has one charge cube on its station ability. After the card is deployed, you may move that charge cube to its deploy ability. Ability Clarifications Dice and Arrows This ability shows two dice to remind you it can only be used if you allocated a roll to the sum, and a right pointing arrow to tell you that you will be changing which sector you will get rewards from. These abilities can only be used during phase 3 of the turn. Allocate dice, and only if you choose to allocate the sum of the dice. It may be used either on your turn or your opponent's turn because it's a green ability. To use this ability, you must use the sum of the dice. If this ability shows only one right arrow, then using this ability means the sector you gain rewards from this turn is shifted one sector to the right. For example, if a 9 is rolled and you use this ability, you would gain rewards for your 10 sector instead of your 9 sector. If the ability shows both a right arrow and two double right arrows, then using this ability means the sector you gain rewards from this turn is shifted one or two sectors to the right, your choice. You may combine these type of effects on a single roll to shift your reward sector many spaces along your board. Like all other abilities, this ability may be used regardless of what sector is placed in, regardless of what sectors are rolled on a dice, and regardless of it being deployed or not deployed. Moreover, this ability is green so you can use it on any player's turn. Example of using green dice arrow effects. Your opponent rolled double four, you have two single arrow effects charged, and one double arrow effects charged. You could take the dice individually, and gain nothing twice for your 4 sector. Bad idea. Allocating the sum gets you nothing once for your 8 sector. Also a bad idea. However, if you take the sum, but also spend one charge cube off either of your single arrow abilities, and one off your double arrow ability, you would shift the sector you gain rewards from this turn, three sectors to the right, and gain the four credits from your 11 sector instead of the nothing you get from your 8 sector. Buy a card, claim a card. These abilities can only be used during phase 1, 5 or 7 of your own turn. See pages 12 to 13. Buy a card. When you use the buy a card ability, it acts similar to a normal buy, except you only spend the exact cost of the card you buy instead of all your credits. Moreover, you may still make your normal buy on your turn. If the buy ability also gives you money, you gain the money before you buy the card. You are not required to buy a card when using this ability. Claim a card. When you claim a card, simply choose a ship card of the appropriate level from the shipyard and add it to your console without paying for it. This is not a buy, and you may still make your normal buy. You are not required to claim all the cards indicated. Swap Sectors These abilities can only be used during phase 1, 5 or 7 of your own turn. See pages 12 to 13. An ability that says you may swap cards and sectors means you take all the cards in these two sectors and swap them. This includes the station card and all the deployed cards in each of those sectors. In the example below, you would place all of your cards in your 5 sector into your 8 sector, and all of your cards in your 8 sector into your 5 sector. A couple of notes. 1. 
Any cards you buy during future turns are still placed according to their sector number, as normal. Number 2. Many of these abilities have a credit reward listed above their charge squares. These credits are rewards and are earned when you gain rewards for that card, in addition to placing a charge cube on the card. In this diagram, before, the swap action moves all cards in Sector 5 into Sector 8 and vice versa. Afterwards, the Sector 5 cards now sit in Sector 8, and the Sector 8 cards now sit in Sector 5. Reroll Dice These abilities can be used only during Phase 2, Roll, of your own turn. See page 12. Rerolling one or both dice affects all players. When a player is considering using this ability, they should warn the other players, so they do not gain rewards using the wrong dice results. Place one charge anywhere. These abilities can be used during Phase 1, 5, or 7 of any player's turn. You may place one charge cube on an empty charge square on any of your cards. All players lose 4 victory points. These abilities can be used only during Phase 1, 5, or 7 of your own turn. Other players lose 4 victory points. A player can never drop below 0 victory points. Place a card on any 7 to 12 sector. These abilities can only be used during Phase 1, 5, or 7 of your own turn. This allows you to put cards on sectors they may not normally be placed on, such as putting a card for Sector 12 on Sector 7. Set Dice These abilities can only be used during Phase 2, Roll, of your own turn. This must be used before you roll the dice. Instead of rolling a die, you choose which result to place it on. For example, instead of rolling a die, you may place it so the 6th result is used. Further, if you have a charge cube on both the blue charge squares, you would be able to spend one charge cube to set one die and roll the other, or spend both charge cubes to set both dice to any number you want. Exchange this card with any other card on your board. This ability can be used during phase 1, 5 or 7 of any player's turn. When you use this ability, exchange this card's position with any station card on your board. For example, if this card was placed on your board in sector 9, you could swap it with your 7 sector card on your board. In which case that card would now be in your 9 sector, and this card would be in your 7 sector. As another example, if this card was deployed in your 9 sector, and you used the ability, you could swap it with your 4 sector station card on your board. In this case, that card would now be deployed in your 9 sector, and this card would now be in your 4 sector. You win! This ability can be used during phase 1, 5 or 7 of any player's turn. Yep, you read that correctly. When you use this ability, points are irrelevant. The game ends immediately, and you win! Do not finish the round. If another player has more than 40 victory points, you win anyway. 2 times station active. This ability can be only used during phase 4. Gain rewards. Of your own turn before gaining the rewards for the roll. See page 12. When you activate this ability and resolve its effect, gain whatever blue rewards you get during this turn for one sector two times. Note, this ability cannot be used to charge itself. Example to the right. If a 2 and 3 were rolled on your turn and you activated this ability, then, after claiming your credits from 2 and 3 sectors, you could choose to take the reward from either your 2 or 3 sector a second time. If you took the sum for a 5, this ability will let you gain your 5 sector reward twice. 2 times deploy, passive. This ability can be used only during phase 4 of an opponent's turn before gaining rewards from the roll. When you activate this ability and resolve its effect, gain whatever red rewards you get this turn for one sector two times. Note, this ability cannot be used to charge itself. Example to the right, if 5 and 6 were rolled on your opponent's turn and you allocated the dice individually, you could use this ability to gain the rewards for sector 5 twice, just placing a charge cube and gaining the free credits from Sector 5 twice, for a total of 6 credits and 2 charge cubes being placed, but you would not gain the 2 credits from the 6th sector a second time. Credit or Income or VP Generating Abilities This ability can be used only during Phases 1, 5 and 7. When you activate this ability and resolve its effect, gain the resource listed in the ability box. Light Speed Variant Not recommended for your first game. This is an optional variant for those who want to essentially skip through the first few turns of the game and get into the middle of the game faster. Playing with this variant will reduce the average length of the game. Note, these are not the standard rules, but rather a variant. Before the game, instead of giving each player 5 credits, each player begins the game with 15 credits and 1 income. Players may spend their credits to buy as many of these cards as they wish to buy and can afford with their 15 credits. Any unspent credits are kept to start the game. Any unbought cards are placed at the bottom of the respective decks. The player who kept the most money goes first. In the case of a tie, the player with the highest sector card goes first. And if still tied, roll to see who goes first. Starting bonuses are the same as a standard game of Space Space. The starting player does not gain any resources. The second player gains one credit. The third player, if any, gains two credits. The fourth and fifth player gains one income. Strategy tip, dice roll probability. Because players choose to take the dice separately, or as a sum, probabilities of results do not make for a normal distribution. 
and most experienced gamers know, when two six-sided dice are rolled, one of the possible 36 results occurs, shown in the graph below. The result of the most ways to be rolled is 7, which can be rolled 6 different ways out of the 36 possible results. However, it pays to note that in space space, the dice can be allocated individually, so lower numbers 1 to 6 will actually be the most common. Each number between 1 and 6 appears 12 times. Further, since the numbers 2 to 6 can be made with the sum of the dice as well, their results become even more frequent. The numbers in order of possible frequency are 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and finally 12. And thus, naturally, the cards with a sector of 7 or higher have more powerful rewards, where the more frequently occurring sector cards have weaker rewards. Finally is the reference page. Rewards and Activations Blue rewards and abilities can only be gained during your turn, when you are the active player. Red rewards and abilities can only be gained during an opponent's turn, when you are the passive player. Green abilities can be used during any turn, whether you're the active player or the passive player. Charge rewards. Blue colored squares can only be charged as a reward during your turn, when you are the active player. Red colored squares can only be charged as a reward during an opponent's turn, when you are a passive player. Activation cards. These cards have one or more colored squares on them, with an activation ability that describes the ability. Their effects have an activation icon in the upper left hand corner. 2 times station active. This ability can be used only during phase 4. Gain rewards of your own turn before gaining the rewards for the roll. When you activate this ability and resolve its effect, gain whatever blue rewards you get this turn for one sector 2 times. 2 times deploy passive. This ability can be used only during phase 4. Gain rewards of an opponent's turn before gaining rewards from the roll. When you activate this ability and resolve its effect, gain whatever red rewards you get this turn from one sector 2 times. Credits. When you gain this reward, advance your credits cube by that amount. Income. When you gain this reward, advance your income cube by that amount. If you have less credits than your income, reset your credits to equal your income. Victory points. When you gain this reward, advance your victory cube by that amount. Text abilities. This reward simply has text that describes what you gained when you claimed the reward. Arrow. Both directions. If there is an arrow pointing to the right and one to the left, then you choose whether to gain the rewards one sector to the left or one sector to the right. Arrow and reward. If there is an arrow and another reward, you gain the reward, and gain the rewards for one sector over in the direction of the arrow. Dice Arrow's Activation Abilities These abilities can only be used when allocating dice, but only if you've chosen to summon the dice. If this ability shows only one arrow, then using this ability means you gain the rewards one sector to the right of the sector to which you allocated the dice. If the ability shows both one arrow and two arrows, then you may choose to shift the sector you receive rewards from one or two sectors to the right. Board Game Reader. Listen, learn, play.